project. So this sweet little 27 is the main machine for a lovely customer. And um, she works great. She works great, which is fabulous. You know, we don't have to deal with any you know, frozen in place rust issues. But we are going to give her a very dramatic facelift and it's gonna be adorable, I am hoping. So I know I've done a lot of 27s, but honestly, um, I think that they're great. I think they so great. I love the way that these shuttle machines work. You know, they're great. Highly recommend. Um, she does have a new shuttle in here, so we don't need to worry about cleaning that. It looks like it's a, a fairly new one. Okay, so that's great. Lots of good stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and get her taken apart uh, and put into my electrolysis tank so we can be stripping her paint off. And she has these little guide tapes on there. I'm really hoping that she has more because I'm going to be pulling those off and polishing up these plates. Um, but anyway, yeah, let's get started taking her apart. I'm actually going to pull her um, bobbin winder off first. There's just one little screw right here that I need to release. That's going to pull out a little bracketing screw that I can just pull this whole little bobbin winder out. Okay, so here's that little bolt. You need to stop calling them screws and call them bolts. That's what they are. And here is her bobbin winder. Again, it's free. I will be cleaning it. Um, but this if you ever find a bolt that has one long shoulder in there, it's probably for this, okay? So, like usual, when I pull things off, I put them in little Ziploc bags with everything for their little component and put it in my box over here to be cleaned. So, let me go to the next step. Actually, before I do anything else. I'm going to take these hinges off. There's just one little screw down here. I have a bit that's too wide. So let me change out my bit and uh, we'll take basically these little screws out of each side and that's going to pull out the whole little hinge area. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and deal with everything up here in her nose. So I'm going to take her plate off first. And again, it's in pretty darn good shape. I'll polish it, but it's in pretty good shape. Okay, so let's see what it looks like. Not bad at all. Very pleased with that. So let me put the plate in its own little baggie. And I'm actually going to take this screw off oops, and um, fix that. Okay, so I am going to pull her tension mechanism out next. Um, okay, so I'm going to do this in a couple steps first, taking out all of her little pieces. Hang on, I need to get a place to put them safely. If you can see as I'm pulling them out, I got the two discs. Okay, I need to take this screw out here to pull off this little bracket and I am noting that it is set all the way over on this side. If you can see there's like a little half moon or quarter moon kind of thing there so you can adjust it and she has it set way over here. Just noting, you know, so that is loose now. I've got my little screw I'm gonna put in here. Should be able to pop off. There you go. All right. So now to take all of this off, what I'm going to do is put the outer nut back on just so that it covers everything down here at the end. And then I can put my screwdriver in, righty tighty, lefty loosey, unscrew it. And that should bring out this post and the spring. Okay. So there you go. This is a style that does not seem to have the little tension release in there, and I don't see any tension release mechanism in here. This is an old girl. She is from 1905, so that was before they incorporated that little aspect in there. So again, I'm going to put all of these little tension parts in its own little bag and set that aside. Okay, so I'm going to get started with the needle bar first, and I'm just going to pull off 
the little clamp. This looks like a pretty good needle. So I need to find something to stick it in so that I can keep track of it. So I'm just going to cut a piece of sponge off. And stick that in there. Stick this and all of the needle bar components into its own little baggie here. Okay, so on the bar, there are two, two screws here. This one goes through the bar. This one is like a clamp. And I need to pull both of those out. You know, lefty Lucy and all of that. And this one. And hopefully with these two out, the needle bar will be free. Okay, oops, I forgot to get this thread, thread guide out. That is a screw on this side, but I was hoping I could turn the needle bar at this point. Um, let me get my little hammer to tap it. I can figure out where I left it. Here it is. Okay, I've got my little nylon ended hammer here. I'm just going to tap it, see if I can get it to move. And I can. She is free. She's just stiff. Um, so I'm going to flip this needle bar around so I can see the screw from the front side. It's stiff, so I just put a bunch of oil all over it. Got my non marring pliers here. Let's see if I can get her to turn. She's turning a little now. Okay. These are large pliers in a small space. Start them up like this, and I can turn it so that I can see this little screw on this side, which is gonna make my life a lot easier. Don't need this ratchet on there, okay. This is a Chapman screwdriver, if you don't know. They're really helpful. Kind of big, but really helpful. Okay, so now this is off, and it's going in the same little baggie. And hopefully I can just push this needle bar up. But see, it's a little bit dirty in there, and that might make things a little tight. So I'm just going to get this little lightweight wire wheel here, which, you know, she's a little lightweight kind of thing, so if she hits any kind of resistance, she'll stop again. It's all right. Okay, so now I need to push this up. Um, there is another block. I don't see another block. What I'm going to do before I work on that is I'm going to take this lifter lever off. So she has an aftermarket one on here, but they work great, the low shank machine aftermarket things. Oops. And this is one of those little push button releases, so you can do all kinds of little adapter feet on there. So that's lovely. And there is a broken thread guide on there, which to me means that she does not use, I mean thread cutter, which to me means that she does not use her thread cutter and that it is okay if this thing goes away because I don't like them either. So anyhow, I'm going to be removing that. Um, just wiggle it off with the big pliers, okay? So this is just going to go away because that's just going to hurt me at some point. All right, so now that this is out of the way, because I need to put a board underneath here, let me see if I can just use my little hammer. This hammer, I don't use it for a lot for up here, but honestly, this flat handle I use a lot. So if I can come under here and tap it like this, it, it's a weird angle and I need to turn off the camera so I can get a better angle, but basically doing that, it's gonna keep this from getting damaged and I'll be able to tap it up. Okay, so now I'm just wiggling it turning and wiggling it again with my pliers that should not hurt anything and if I put this here and I turn the hand wheel down that bracket should just move down and then raise up a little bit and then I'm going to put my hammer handle in here and the brackets going to raise down more 
raise it up. Okay, it's loose enough now I can pull it out. So there it is, needle bar. And uh, then we're gonna get started working on the presser bar. Even though this bracket is technically for the needle bar, I'm gonna keep it with the presser bar stuff because when I put it back together, that needs to go in before the presser bar. And if I don't keep it with the presser bar, I will do it in the reverse order and have to take everything apart and redo it. And I know this because that's happened to me several times. So, um, screwdriver. Okay, so now this little screw here is the bracket that is holding my presser bar in place. Taking that off, I'm going to unscrew this finial up here on the top. And pull it out. This is coming apart so easily. You've seen me work, or maybe you haven't, but I've worked on a whole lot of very, very rusty machines where this is a chore to get out. And because this is actively being used, it's not, so that's great. Okay, now I should be able to pull my presser bar out. You know, same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and put more oil in here and wiggle it with my non-marring pliers down here so I can get it to start turning. And again, it's a weird angle. Okay, so you can see it's starting to turn. So it's freed up a little bit. All right, so it's feeling sticky. So I'm gonna stick the rubber handle of this big hammer underneath here. Hopefully I don't destroy that. And then I need to move this little bracket down. Come on, let's try a little more oil and I'm gonna put a little bit of heat on there to melt whatever goo is in there. A little heat. And a little more oil. Okay, let's try it one more time. And it's moving, I don't know if you can tell, but it is moving. So just give me a minute and I'm just gonna keep doing this, basically pushing up from down here, which you cannot see, okay? Pushing up from down here and pushing down from here. And that presser bar is moving. There you go, now the bracket is free. Uh, almost, almost. I want to show you, um, it just moved about an inch and the little washer poked out the top. Since that came through, there's a chance that the spring will, but I guess it won't, so I just wanted to point that out. There is a washer on top of the spring. I don't want to misplace that, so I've put it away. Okay. up and give me a minute just to get it the last little bit here okay so this is coming loose now presser bar I'm gonna pull out this spring here keep that all together this bracket comes out okay and now this should come off also right here so there is a bearing on the post here, this is the bearing that slides off. That stays with this piece. The bearing goes on that post and then it's gonna travel back and forth in this little Y-shaped groove here, okay? But I'm gonna make sure that that all gets really well cleaned. So let me lock this stuff up together. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the lifter lever, which is one screw here. On the inside, this is not working. Let me switch out screwdriver. This is very, very stuck, so I'm going to throw some oil on there, heat it up, and I'm not sure if this goes all the way through. Let me see if there's an entry point back here. Yes, there is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead 
and put some oil in this little hole back here too and uh, let that sit for just a minute. Okay, so heating it up with oil helped and I am using my torch kind of freely here but that is because I am going to be completely stripping the paint off of this machine. Um, if you're not going to be stripping your machine, be careful because that amount of heat is actually a paint stripper, so that could be trouble. Um, okay, so here's my lifter lever and its little screw. And actually, in the same little baggie, I'm going to try to put this one because I assembled them at about the same time. So I am going to spray some penetrating oil in here first try to get it, you know, ready for the event here. Switch out my bit to a much larger, heavier bit. And find my ratchet because I'm going to need that extra torque. Not sure where it went. Ah, here it goes. Okay. So put my, my ratchet back onto my screwdriver here. And I don't know. Can you see? Move you over here. I'm just going to press this down and crank lefty Lucy. And there we go. How great is that? Okay, so here's the big flat screw. That is off, and I need to wiggle this piece off. And I'm just going to bring it through the hole. Okay, so this little bearing is attached on here. That doesn't come off, at least not on this model. So that's good. This little slot here, this, this thing is at the end of the main shaft, it doesn't come out, but there's a little slot there that as I turn the wheel you'll see the slot go up and down. That's what this is traveling in, so when I'm cleaning her up after stripping I'll make sure that that's nice and clean. Okay, so I'm going to put this in with my lifter lever so I remember to put them back in, you know, at about the same time. And. That's about it for the nose up here. I don't take the main shaft out so this piece stays in. So let me go ahead and flip her upside down and we can get started underneath here. So I need to take this bolt off here first. This is what's connecting it to this vertical shaft, which is what is basically changing the stitch length. And here's something I have discovered. You know, this is probably not a groundbreaking moment for anyone else, but it was for me. Pretty much down here, if you see something with a bolt, that means it's an adjustment point, okay? So this has an adjust, has a bolt, so that means this is an adjustment for something, and that something has to do with stitch length. Um, over here, there's another bolt. That, has gonna be, that means that's an adjustment point. The bolt is underneath here where my finger is. And that adjustment is for the placement of this carrier here, okay, going back and forth to fine tune that. So there's bolts over here at the pivot points because that is an adjustment point for moving this back and forth to get the feed dogs centered. So, you know, just little things, but I need to get this is a 3 8 inch nut here. So righty tighty, lefty loosey, can I crack it? Okay. And once that is cracked, then I should be able to pull off the screw over here too. But I think I need to untwist just a little bit more. Now let me see if I can just unscrew this over here. Um, hang on, let me flip her up. So it's this screw right here, okay. So I'm holding the nut down here with my fingers and unscrewing this so that it can come off. All right, so there's my little nut. Here is my screw. And this is an adjustment screw because it is not centered. And some people like to tell me very clearly that that's called eccentric. When you are not centered, you're eccentric. And I have been called eccentric, so there you go, not centered. But anyway, there it is, it needs to get cleaned. Um, if it's an eccentric bolt with a nut, I am saying that that's probably an adjustment point. So now this is free. 
and I needed that to be free so that I could get my stitch length part off, which I can't do until I get my wheel off. But I'm just going to continue down here. Um, I need to get, get my 2 by 4 under there. These pivot points off. These are 9 16 inch bolts. So I'm going to go get my little 9 16 inch, inch ratchet and take those off. Okay, so once I got these little bolts off, then there is a screw down here. A big screw that I'm also going to undo with my big screwdriver. And that is also loose, so yay, yay, yay. Okay. So here is one. The other side is going to look exactly the same. Okay, just a little pointy. So, as I said before, all of this will get cleaned up. Let me take this side's uh, pivot point screw off right here, and I'll be right back. So now that those are out, I'm just going to wiggle this. Ooh, I forgot to take the feed dogs off. Okay, so there is another screw right here. I need to loosen up. That is connecting the feed dogs. I'm just going to pull this off here. The feed dogs are still in there. That's okay. I'm going to put this little screw back with that so I don't lose it. And put this big shaft with all of the little pieces I took off of it, including the eccentric one that connects um, down here all together with this bracket. Okay, I've got the feed dogs out and I'm just going to put that in there with all of this too because it's part of the same system. And that goes into the bucket to be cleaned. Okay, so now we have this back shaft here with its own issues. So first of all, I'm going to disconnect it back here. I'm going to try to undo this, and that is moving out, so yay, that's great. Um, on the sides here, there's a little screw that acts like a clamp, so I am going to loosen those up on both sides if I can. Again, let's just throw some oil all over it and see if that's going to help us out. Um, but while that's soaking in, let me see if I can undo this screw. And yay, I can. Okay. So, the one for this front is right here. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and move this over. And I'm looking at this. This is also not quite center, but it's very, very minute difference. So that's a, another small adjustment, I would say, maybe, perhaps. All right, so if I can just wiggle this, can I wiggle it up? I was having trouble with this little screw on the side. Let me try one more time and see if I can loosen that up. The screw is not behaving, and I was going to start messing it up if I tried anymore, so I just wiggled it off. I will fix that as I'm cleaning. Okay, but here's this shaft. That's going to stay with those parts. And I'm going to go ahead and keep this with the same shaft here. So let me flip her back up. Um, you know, I need to take off these front plates so I can get to this easier. And this, the back one is a little sticky right here. I don't know. That's just a normal thing. So let me flip her over here where I can reach and where you can see. Okay. If you can see, I have a black back plate exposed a little bit. I'm putting my wooden handle on there, tapping it because the wood will make sure that that does not get damaged in any way. Okay, I need to put her upright to finish the process here. All right, so now both of these plates are off and I'm gonna go ahead and take off uh, this one also. 
My long screwdriver sometimes is a good thing for this screw and pop that off, okay? So that's going to stay with these long plates. Okay, so now it'll be easier to remove this little bracket here. So from the bottom, you can see this screw here, that's what I want to undo. That's another adjustment point for when we put it back together. Okay, so here, this comes off. Can we wiggle the bracket? Oh, just dropped it, I need to go get that. So, I just spent 20 minutes looking for this. It was there. So I'm gonna tell you what I have done. I went online and I ordered myself a bright pink yoga mat. And I am going to put that on my table here. This will stop falling um, because I think it'll be a lot easier to see that on a bright pink background than on gray. And that just is frustrating. But, you know, we didn't lose it, so I got that going for me. Okay, I did get that bracket out. It's right here. So, um, you know, keeping this with it. I'm just going to twist it in there really quick so that even though it's with other stuff, I know that that's what it's for. And I want to take this bracket off here too, if I can. There's two little screws right here. Kind of like a clamp. Ah! Kind of like a clamp again. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen up. I'm going to loosen up these two screws and see if I can turn this one at the very end. Um, this goes all the way through. There's a little like chrome looking dot on this side. And I'm gonna try to put some oil on this side, heat it up down here after I've loosened this out and see if I can get this turned out. If I can't, I can't. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't, you know. It's one of those kinds of things. All right, so we're gonna see if this works. My big old screwdriver with my wrench on it. And maybe, let's try it one more time. I'm trying to push it in as hard as I can. Um, I'm going to go flip my mach this machine upside down into a vise. Okay, well, she said no. This is not coming off. I used in my, I have a wood vise over on the other side of the room. Had her in there, used what you saw. I put a big old bit into my impact gun, tried that until my gun almost started smoking. And it honestly started to chowder up this a bit. So I said, you know what, that's it, I'm done. So I came back, smoothed what that little bit of damage was back off. So, you know, she's back to being a pretty little girl. So I am just going to be masking around this. Um, I'll clean it up really good after I have her stripped, put those screws back in there and just mask around it. And that's gonna be just fine, honestly, just fine. So what I'm gonna do now is come over here and take off her balance wheel because I need to be able to get all of this stitch length stuff out next. Okay, so I've unscrewed this little guy here. Look at that, I need a new glove. Let me switch that out real quick. Okay, so pulling off here. Nasty little washer. Hopefully this will come off easily. Hopefully, maybe not, okay. If she wants to be that way, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the little belt guard here. Um, if I can find. Okay, get this unscrewed. The belt guard is gonna get uh, stripped and painted and so is the balance wheel. So um, that's the belt guard screw. I am putting it in with this stuff and this is gonna get, you know, 
cleaned up and polished because it looks kind of kind of bad right now, but it'll be okay. All right, so now, now that that is gone, let me put my little board back underneath here. Do you hear that angry cat? She wants in. All right. Um, it should just pop off, but it's being a bit finicky. So I am just getting my uh, screwdriver in the little slot and turning it. Now I need to get a fatter screwdriver. Let's cut this one in there. Turn it. Okay. Getting closer, getting closer. Um, I'm going to throw some oil in there and just tap it off. I'm going to flip it over and just tap it off from behind with, you know, my little wooden handle and it'll pop right off. It did not want to pop right off, so I just put my little gear puller on here. You know, we're going to get her off one way or another. And I don't have one of those really nice ones. I just have one of the little cheaper ones. But in general, it has always worked for me. So if you can't afford a super one, I think I think this one was like 28 bucks or something. But it does great. So anyhow, there you go. This is also going to get stripped. It looks like there are places where the plating is just shot. So I will deal with that when the time comes. Okay, so now that that is out of the way, I need to get um, all of this taken care of. So this screw is going to come out. It needs a bigger bit. So let me just get that started. <clears throat> well, not with this, apparently. All right, this is going to be another job for some oil and some heat and some letting it play. The place that this is actually screwed into is in here. So I've put oil with my little needle nose in there and heated that up this way. Okay, so I'm going to let that think about itself for just a minute. And I'm going to get a bigger screwdriver bit on here. All right, let's see if that does any good. <laughs> no, she is not budging at all. At all. You know what? I am going to throw more oil on there and just walk away for a bit because I have some other things I need to take care of. And hopefully, by the time I get back, um, this will have done its magic. I had to come over here and start refilling my tank. I emptied it last time. Usually, one tank full of water will last, you know, about four sewing machine strippings. So, that white stuff down there is washing soda. Arm & Hammer Laundry Booster washing soda. So, and that's all it is, is washing soda and water and electricity, okay? And so these are iron, well at one point they were really pretty diamond plate iron, but you know, now they're kind of rusty, but they still work. They're all connected, and when I go to connect it, what I do is I have a battery, it's a little four-wheeler kind of battery, the black goes to the machine, the red goes to over here where it's rusty. I remember that because sewing machines are black, rusty panels are red, you know, remember how you can. That is connected to a battery charger back there, which I then plug in. It works for me. Don't ask me the ins and outs of why electricity works this way, but what it'll do is um, strip off the paint, the rust, and make a really nice machine. So. I need this to get full enough that it's going to cover the machine with only a little bit of the spool pin sticking out. To show you that this was able to work on this screw, so you know, that's always fun. It just did not want to on that one underneath, so humanity restored at least. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. and. I need to get this part wiggled out too. It's kind of a little bit of a juggle. 
Once I have this out, okay, there's a block in there and this fork that is sticking out here I should be able to pull out. All right, so here's the really dirty fork. And the block fell down in here. Let me grab my magnet and I'll fish it out. And then this unscrews the rest of the way. Like that. Okay, so let me get my magnet. And I see you in there. Okay, so here's the block. And then this is the whole little stitch length system. And I will put it in its own bag also. Oh, and this does have a bearing on here. Okay, that needs to get stay together. Don't lose that. And it needs to get cleaned also. All right, so I'm showing you how I am taking the badge off of this machine. And I, I hate doing this because if you've done several machines, you know it's not a one-trick pony. What works on one machine does not work on another machine. Sometimes you can just grab and yank you know, and pull it out and th that will work great. Sometimes not. Sometimes you have to shear pins on the back and then it just pops right off, you know, and by shearing pins I mean um, sticking in a screwdriver or a chisel thing from the back and, and shearing off the back that's inside the column. Sometimes not. And so what I'm having to do this time is, you know, I've got my very dangerous rusty not rusty, but burnt razor blade under here, okay, because it will fit. I've got a very fine little grinding bob on the bottom. I don't know the official name of that. And I am just very carefully grinding off the head. And every now and then, Wiggle my razor blade, see if it's enough to pop through. If not, keep going. They ha I have a lot more aggressive tips, but I don't want to go too hard, too fast, and have something slip, you know? Because these are very, they're just a light, light uh, metal and really easy to damage. So this side popped off, so basically, Again, very dangerous, do not recommend, but it works for me. The razor blades have a notch at the end that I can kind of slide over that post and wiggle up, all right? So this side has popped off. Now I still need to do this side over there. I do have uh, my own pins um, that we've stamped little flower designs onto. They're all brass that I will be put using to put this back on. So I'm not trying to save these existing pins. Once I get the badge off, you know, and it is safely put away, then I can come back with a punch and push out what is left of those pins in those holes and just, you know, I can wail on those and get that out. But anyway, I still need to get this side off over here in the same way. So once I have it off and I've ground off whatever was left of the little head that's sticking out, I use a punch and there it goes. Punched it out. I don't even know if this has a size marked on it, but it's a pretty small little punch. And so now those holes are empty, and uh, when I'm reassembling her, I could just use my new pins to put her back on. Okay, so I think that that's about it, and I'm ready to put her into her tank. So I moved the machine over into the tank. I'll show you in a minute. And then I'm just putting some wire around this wheel and you know it's not really beautiful but it's functional just so that this wire will have contact with the metal here okay and then you know what i'm going to stick this up through the middle i think that will be good okay so now this wheel is connected to the wire and on the other side i'm going to put this um, also Wrap some wire around it in any fashion I see fit here. The thing is just to make sure it's connected. And then I will secure this part of the wire here to the little uh, spool pin on the top of the machine. Okay, so it is almost full and I got my little connector on there. 
As soon as um, everything of the machine is submerged except for the very top of this spool pin, I'm actually probably going to need to move this clip up here more towards the tip, um, then I'll shut off the water and plug everything in. All right, so I just plugged in my charger and I don't know if you can see, but there are bubbles coming off. You know, the electrolysis work is starting to do its thing. This usually takes about 48 hours to completely clean and strip a machine, you know, since it's fresh tank. I'm very hopeful that it'll come really quick. Sometimes when I have an old tank and the contact isn't as good, it takes three days, but we will see. So this will be the end of this video. Next time we're going to get her painted up. Very excited about that, and I'll see you then, hopefully. Bye-bye.